Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Huey Poplock. This is the Central Florida Computer Society sent, uh, Windows Special Interest Group, or known as the Windows SIG. We meet once a month, uh, just prior to the main meeting of the Central Florida Computer Society at the Maitland Public Library in Maitland, Florida. However, I, uh, my Participation is coming from Bradenton, Florida, from my home, my new home. And uh, we welcome you, and I welcome you. And last month, for those of you who joined us or watched uh, the recording online, uh, we talked about Windows 10 and went through a lot of the settings and so on. And that was from an earlier build. Uh, the build that I'm uh, working with today is, is 10.166. Uh, which is, as far as I know, is the latest update as of yesterday. Uh, we're going to be talking about what's different with Windows 10 as compared to Windows uh, 8 and earlier versions. Uh, but uh, let's first go to uh, where you can find. Let's see. I got to. Whoops. Got to share my desktop first here. You can't see what I'm doing. So let me. Uh, which and we're going to go all of the Windows SIG meetings notes are listed at Windows uh, at Huey.net slash WinSIG up here in the top. Uh, let me see if I can make that a little bit bigger for you. Up here at the, let's see, can you see my mouse? You may not, yeah, you should be able to see my mouse up here at the top. It's Huey, H E W I E dot net slash WinSIG. And as you go down the page, they're in numerical order. Today's notes are listed here. And on that page is a link to the video from last month, if you've missed it. Or you can go back to last month's notes. And there's actually an embedded uh, copy of the video that you can watch directly from my website. So that'll catch you up if you, if you weren't here last month. You might want to go back and review that because I showed a lot of where the settings are and the types of settings and so on. And what we're going to do today is actually go through what the differences of Windows 10 are and what changes have been made. And um, I've got some notes here. I'm trying to go by a little bit of a script so I don't get too far off base and that we get to cover everything. Uh, the first couple of items, uh, I'm not going to be showing you anything, but I'm just going to some notes that I, I jotted down. Um, one of the things that Microsoft says about Windows 10, that's easier enterprise management and better security. Can't demonstrate that here, but just to know that the, that's one of the features that Microsoft is talking about. And also, Windows 10 will run on almost anything. Uh, the requirements to run Windows 10 are much less than uh, Windows 7 was. So a lot of computers that may have had trouble with Windows 7 should or may run Windows 10. If you're running Windows 8 or 8.1, uh, you shouldn't have a problem, but there are still are some devices. I noticed uh, Kerry Holdsman uh, in his Facebook, someone uh, sh showed that their video card wasn't compatible and it said it will not run on their computer. So there still are a few devices out there that are still working those kinks out, and those things will be handled. But what you want to do is, is test it. And I believe there is, if there isn't already, there's going to be some kind of a way where you can test your system, and it'll tell you whether it'll run Windows 10 or not. So if, if you're already an expert with Windows 10, uh, it's much like a combination of Windows 7 or XP and Windows 8 or 8.1. Um, 
you uh, one of the big things that people didn't oh let's see one other thing here rumors have claimed for months that Microsoft plans to merge its three platforms Windows Windows RT and Windows Phone into a single platform and that's what they're trying to do and that's one of the things if you know one you should know all of the others as well uh, PC users won't see the tiled uh, user interface unless they loved it in Windows 8 or 8.1 uh, if, if you really relied on the old tiles or the the pictures uh, in Windows 8 or 8.1 and I'm just going to call it 8.1 from now on um, if you really like that you can set it up but the default will be the old uh, familiar Windows 7 and earlier desktop will be the default starting point however as I said there is a switch you can turn it on it will make it tiled however in two-in-one devices uh, that's a different story both notebooks and tablets uh, they must be able to gracefully switch between the user interfaces to make these transitions smoother Windows 10 includes a new feature called continuum that automatically detects whether the device is attached to a keyboard and prompts users to choose either a touch centric or keyboard centric experience so if you're using something that does have a keyboard uh, and a touch screen it's going to know that and it's going to give you the choice in which one you want to use okay let's get started with some of the the new things and the new features in Windows 10 one of the things uh, is you now can search from the taskbar in Windows uh, 8.1 you had to use the charms and use search and when in the earlier versions of Windows that had uh, 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 they, you'd have to find a place where it was search but if you'll notice down on the bottom it says ask me anything you can type in there and also there is a microphone we're going to talk about that later because that connects to Cortana or I can actually speak to Cortana uh, directly it's now working uh, from this interface but if we wanted to look up something all we have to do is in here is uh, type in Central Florida Computer Society and uh, it's right here and it opens up and it's there so you don't have to open up your browser and then go to a search engine you can type right there if it's on your computer uh, let's see CFCS you'll notice that there are some things here uh, it says web but I can also look under my stuff and uh, it's I probably don't have much on you I don't have much in the way of things on this computer so you might not see it but you can actually search uh, your own computer or search the web so the searching is directly from the taskbar now you don't have to uh, uh, open the, your search engine uh, through your browser and then start looking you can do it uh, uh, directly uh, from the taskbar uh, the start menu is back and it's more but it's more customizable than ever and uh, we have a Windows start screen if you recall it went away in Windows 8.1 but if we just click here we now have a, a very familiar start menu and then we also have what was known as the start screen and Windows 8.1 now the whole thing about this it's very customizable uh, it looks like I got a question in the chat box uh, yeah Cortana is uh, Roger is like hey uh, Siri or hey Google and I'll, I'll be demonstrating that later on okay uh, the one thing about this this menu now it's very adjustable I could make it this way and if I don't even want to see those blocks I can uh, I believe there's a way to shut them off entirely uh, I believe it's in a setting and I'm not going to go in because I'm not sure where that setting is but 
you can also come down here to all apps and there's all the applications that are on your computer and it doesn't matter whether they're ones specifically for the new what they call the new technology or what you're used to uh, they all now survive on the same screen your desktop uh, the start menu has six components to to it one is your file explorer let's go back here your file explorer so you can see the various uh, items here within file explorer is right from the start menu you've got your documents you've got uh, find my notes here uh, you've got your settings you're here just one click and you're in your settings from the start menu uh, you got your most used apps that are up here on the top and then you've got your power button right here and then the all apps button and again the when you click on the all apps button you'll see everything in alphabetical order and some of them will have a down uh, designation and that means that there's more and then you can see so it's very similar to your start menu in Windows 7 and earlier I don't see any questions in the chat box so let's go to virtual desktops at the last meeting I demonstrated and, sh and showed a little bit about the the uh, virtual desktops and Stan had some concerns or, or at least didn't feel that it was a uh, big improvement where I feel just the opposite I'm going to try to show you why um, I probably open more items than most people at one time and I'm used to having three screens I had three monitors before moving to where I'm living now but because of space being limited where I'm living now I only have one screen and to open up as many windows as I used uh, that, that I formerly had uh, is almost impossible to to get two together open that I can look at at the same time without if I move over and one's overlapping the other something else pops up and it becomes very confusing where now by coming down here to the task view when I click on it it puts the current desktop in the main window and that's what you're seeing at the top but you'll notice at the bottom it says desktop 1 desktop 2 desktop 3 and desktop 4 and I can easily switch uh, right now I'm just looking at and there those are the items that are on desktop 2 there's desktop 3 desktop 4 then we come back to desktop 2 when I click on it it is now my featured desktop I think that's much quicker Stan than going back and forth with alt, uh, alt tab and trying to come up with just one window sometimes you want more I'm going to demonstrate a few other things about organizing your desktops uh, but let's see uh, this new feature is ideal for users who need more than one desktop virtual desktops give multi monitor productivity to a single screen user the button resides next to the search tool and that's right here uh, on the taskbar and when clicked it shows every app that's open and then you can actually open up a new desktop uh, and presumably users can make as many virtual desktops as they want one thing that somebody asked last month and I have not found the answer yet is can you save these and as far as I know the answer to that may be no but I've not researched it enough to give you a definitive answer on that uh, this is uh, this is works broadly like the mission control feature on a on an Apple uh, OS X uh, machine but uh, having not worked with one I can't really tell you what the differences are Coming back to uh, the, the main desktop, uh, right now it's blank, so let's go to one of these where there's more. 
uh, you can open up several items on the desktop, but uh, the modern apps, the ones that are in boxes that we're familiar with that didn't, on the screen we didn't like in 8.1, they also run on the same desktop. So if I click on, uh, let's go in here and let's open up from here. Let's see, some of these I probably haven't done anything with. Uh, I think news is one I've got that's working. And I don't even see it now. Yeah, there it is. When I open up news, I can resize it. Still have it on the screen, the same screen. So you, in Windows 8.1, when you click on one of those kind of boxes, like for, for instance for my news, it was full screen and you couldn't see anything else. In 8.1, they introduced the uh, the current X. It's in the top right hand corner, and you could cl you could at least close it. Now it will reside on the same screen as your other items. And let's see. So they're calling that floating modern apps. Now. In Windows uh, 8, and I believe in 7, they, they started this, uh, where you could snap something over to the side. So if you had a, a file like this, and you wanted to have it on the screen, if you just clicked it real quick to the right, it would snap and take up half the screen. Well, we've got four screens here. And in order to do the snapping, if, if we did it half with one, half with the other, two wouldn't show. Well, in 8.1, uh, that was the way it had to work. In 8, I'm going to pull this away now. In, in Windows 10, you can actually get up to four screens uh, on, uh, sharing by snapping. And you do it by taking it to the corner. So if I go up, let's see if I can slide this up to that corner. Come back down here. Take this one, slide it down to this corner. Whoops, didn't do it hard enough. There we go. We've got one here. Come on. Wonderful. Well, let's try this one. Well, maybe this, maybe the, let's do it this way. No, nope. not getting it to work, but I did have them where all four were down in the, oh, there we go. Let's see. Now we should be able to do it. Okay. And if we had the other one open, it would be over in the other corner. So you can get up to four. So you're going to have, so you can be copying things from your, your spreadsheet Type something in here, or or there be some information here. Copy, then paste it into your your uh, your uh, writer program, and then if you had a picture in your drawing program, you could bring that into your document as well. And. Uh, So I've got three of those in that one, and then here I could do obviously the same thing, but uh, I'm not seeing the chat box, so I'm not seeing if there's any questions or not. <clears throat> if you have any questions there on uh, uh, at the site stand, just unmute the mic and then I'll hear you. Um, The snap mode, let's see, it allows up the four apps to be snapped together. Question. No, you. Nope, okay. Okay, I heard the mic microphone go on, so okay. Um, and you can mix legacy Windows 32 style apps with the modern titles. So you should be able to do that. 
Why I couldn't get it to work, I don't know. I've not played around with this <clears throat> a lot. Uh, the last couple of days, I put in the newer, ver the latest builds. As you can see down here, this is build 10.166. Uh, and then I've been playing with it, going through some notes, trying to get used to it. Uh, I do not have this installed on my main machine because it is my main machine, and this is still the beta version, and it's still the test version. Okay, next item, the shortcut friendly command prompt. Ah, one of the things for those of us who've been around a long time are familiar with a uh, something called the DOS prompt or just the, the system prompt. And what we're going to do is we're going to come down here to... Uh, Doo, 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 doo. I got to remember where it is. Windows Accessories. If I use this a lot, I could make it. Uh, actually, I believe it's under Windows System. Command prompt. I can actually say, pin to the start button, print to the taskbar. And uh, I believe I can also just click, drag it. No, let's see if I can do that. I can create a link here. Let me hit escape because I don't want to lose it from here. But we'll just pin it to this uh, to the start. And so when we come back and we come here, okay, it should be. Okay, where to go? <laughs> anyway, let's go back. Uh, that's not what I wanted. I want to come here. Um, all apps. I was trying to do something I haven't done before, and that's not what I should do in these sessions. But we were in uh, Windows System, Command Prompt, and we're going to open up a Command Prompt. Now, formally, you couldn't take from outside of DOS and paste into there. But now, if, let's type in something here. Um, let's do a dir slash p. And I'm going to copy that. Let's say it was a command and in in something we wanted to test. And now I can be up here and I can just do a control V or paste. It's there and then run it. Couldn't do that in earlier versions of uh, Windows. So if we want to then go to uh, let's see where I've got something. No, you can't just go to. You still have to. You still have to do a uh, uh, change directory to. Uh, Let's see, downloads. I don't know if I have anything there or not. And then do a control V. It still remembered it. And it'll show me what's there. So uh, the DOS prompt, for those of you who are into programming or into doing some things from the prompt, it now you can do a copy and paste so you don't have to type in a long uh, a long uh, list of commands and type it, mistype it, and it won't work. Okay. The you'll notice there's an E down here now, and and it popped up with the little explanation. It's Microsoft Edge. If you recall, last month it was Project Spartan. It is now officially the. Uh, uh, the edge name for the browser. We have a question. Uh, Roger had said, isn't that like Alt-Tab? And I'm not sure uh, when you say that switching between the desktops, I believe, is what you're saying, Roger. And it, it is and it isn't because it's more organized 
You can find the things you want. You can have the things layered so uh, together that belong together so you can go back and forth much easier. That box you're seeing pop up on the screen is uh, where I can see what the chat box is and the commands. So uh, we're going to spend some time with uh, the Microsoft Edge. This is the default home page, which is uh, uh, a lot of things in uh, from Microsoft, Microsoft setup. But you can do it to whatever you want it to be. But uh, let's go to uh, a, a website. And uh, just for the heck of it, let's come here. You can put here search or enter a web address. So we'll go to CF, CS, oops, dot org. And it takes us right to the CFCS page. Now, what's different? between this and, let's say, Windows Explorer, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Internet Explorer. Notice up here we've got some different items. One is, and we'll come back to that one because you can't see anything yet, but this is the one. It's called a web, Make a Web Note. When I click it, now I've got some choices of some things. I've got a pen. I've got a highlighter, I've got an eraser, I've got an add type note, and then I can clip. So let's say we're talking about something uh, about the Windows SIG, and I've, I've got the, I can change what color I want for this and what size I want for it. So I've got the one I want, so what I'm going to say is, okay, this is the Windows SIG. Wow, that's neat. And then somewhere here for new CFCS postings, uh, let's say we want to make a note about that. So we're going to come over here and we're going to say, uh, I hope that others. Well, And what I can do is I can click on this. If you'll notice as I move my mouse over, I can collapse that so it stays. But it's got a number one there, and I know there's a note there, and I can open it. Now, there are several things I can do with this now. One, I can just save it. Or I can share it. When I click on Share, because I've got Evernote Touch, because I live by Evernote, uh, I can share it with Evernote Touch, or I can put it in OneNote, which is Microsoft's built-in uh, note program similar to Evernote. So because I've installed Evernote Touch, it gives me the choice of either one. But let's take a look what it does when I do, uh, let's say, Evernote Touch. Go to Share. It's now shared. Now, if we come down here to Evernote Touch, we open up the note. And it's actually shared the whole page with this and with our note. And then Well, it didn't, yeah, and up here on the top right, I know it's hard to see. Let me see if I can zoom in on this. No, this doesn't zoom. But over here, it says the note that's attached to number one is next to a number one. If I had three or four notes on here, they would be listed on the top right. So it, it's, it saved the whole page as one page, so there's not breaks in it. And uh, it does a similar thing with... Uh, Microsoft Notes, if we share it out to Notes, OneNote, uh, it will do something very similar. I tried it earlier and it, 
it didn't work, but I don't know notes, so I'm not going to uh, spend the time to show you that. But it does something very similar to it, and you're then able to save it. You can also just save it as a file, and or I can send it, and, and, and I'm not sure where it sends it, to be honest with you. I think it sends it automatically to OneNote. View note. Yeah, and there it is in OneNote. So with one button, I don't have to go and share it and pick what I want. By clicking on this, it automatically will go to OneNote. Uh, what I can also do is I can click the clipping and say, OK, I want this part right here. And so let's see. What did I do the last time it worked? Oh, it copied it. It's now in the uh, system copy. And then if I open, let's see, let's go out to uh, another desktop that I have here, or I've got here, and we'll put it in Office Draw, and we'll just do a... Uh, You edit. We'll do no. We're not doing a paste. Okay, it's not doing it here. I was able to do it, and it may not do it between windows, but I was able to uh, do this earlier when I played with uh, paint. Sure, if I've got paint here, and we'll come into uh, all apps and. Accessories, paint, and right mouse click. Paste. And there it is in, in here. And then we can edit it or do whatever we want with it. So it's uh, from a website we can do an awful lot without having to do a, a go in and use other programs and you and bring up snipping tool and then save it and then copy it and it was it was really hard to do what I just did uh, prior to uh, uh, Windows 10 so I'm looking forward to being able to use that uh, let's see what else is different in edge I, that's the biggest thing, uh, and I had this working earlier, and I'm not sure. I can't remember. Let's see where else we can go to here. Do, 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 do. Okay, we got Microsoft.com. We want to open up another tab. Let me start. No. History. You're gonna have. You're gonna have your history, your reading tab. You can. Uh, there's your history. You can do go to your where your downloads are, and that's for your bookmarks. You can clear your history right here. Um, I'm trying to remember what that was. That was kind of neat, and I don't remember what it was now. Sorry about that, folks. Um, that's it for uh, Microsoft's Edge. Again, you can just leave that up. It does some of the top stories. You can click on any of these. Let's see if there's something here that... Okay, so there's storms. And it takes us to the page. And again... Uh, 
Okay, I'm hearing an ad, and you probably aren't hearing it. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, there it is there. We'll stop it. I'm not sure if you were hearing it or not. Uh, and I'm going to close it. Okay, so that's uh, Microsoft Edge, the new browser. However, things like Mozilla Firefox still works. And uh, you can go where you want to go with uh, Firefox and search the same way that you would otherwise. Uh, um, I tried to get uh, World uh, um, Web of Trust. I've got it installed and it apparently isn't showing the uh, the statuses of the websites. So that's not working yet. Okay, let's move on to the next thing, which is the Charms Bar. In Windows 8.1, we had something called the Charms Bar. Uh, Microsoft has removed it for desktop users in Windows 10. Uh, the search app has been moved to the taskbar, which, which I just showed you. The settings panel is now uh, either a modern UI uh, app or is uh, uh, there's other ways to uh, get to the settings. There are no, uh, there's no devices app in the new operating system, but users can access the devices and printers section in the control panel. You can get the control panel uh, from all apps and be under um, I think it's under accessories or it's under system. Under system. So under system, we have the command prompt, control panel, the default programs. Uh, we've got devices. So there is, you can get to devices. And the article I was reading said that there wasn't one, but if you click on this, uh, you're going to add devices. It's not a, a devices app per se, but it is where the settings are. And again, this was the settings menu that I went through ex extensively in the last meeting, so I'm not going to go through it here. There's a lot of ways to get to the settings. Um, and the sharing option is still available, but only through individual apps, not through the whole computer. Um, something else they've added now is notifications. And down here on the lower right is a notifications. If, if there is a new one, it's white with black lines in it. And then when you've looked at it, it'll be black uh, with white lines in it. If I click on it, it is a uh, side panel that, that comes in. And if there's any notifications, it will list them here. And I had two or three on there. And I cleared them, thinking that others would be here to show you. And they aren't. So. Uh, but it does show that updates were installed on Saturday, yesterday. And if I click on that, it will go back up and I can check to see. Uh, today I checked at 1248 and, and I am up to date at this point. And you've got the Windows Defender. These are where you can turn things on and, and turn them off. But then notifications is nice because if it's white, you know that you got some kind of a notification. And it's very clear in what those are. And uh, you may find some of these other things that you can set. You can set quiet hours so you don't get notifications and so on. So there's some settings for that as well. But that is uh, uh, something new. And I think you're going to see uh, something you'll probably uh, make use of if there's inf information that needs to be uh, uh, sent to you from the this, this system. OK. The next item I want to talk about is the personal digital assistant on an iOS, uh, on a Mac, on an iPad, on an iPhone. It's Siri, S-I-R-I. And, and Google, I'm not sure what they call it. Uh, I think it's a, just Miss Google or Google. 
uh, on my Amazon Echo, it's Alexa. And now in Windows, it's Cortana. The problem I'm having is you can't hear what I hear through my headset or through speakers uh, using the Adobe Connect that we're using to uh, record this. So uh, I apologize. I'm going to try to show you what it looks like, but I've got a couple of uh, quick videos uh, that will you'll be able to hear what it is. But notice down here it says, Ask Anything. Well, I can type in, or I can say, Hey, Cortana. Hey, Cortana. What's the weather? You can see her answer. I'm going to try to turn the volume way up and see if you can hear what she says when I ask her the same thing. So bear with me just a moment. And I have to take my headset off and move the microphone to the earpiece. But let's see if that works. Hey, Cortana. What is the weather? It's currently 76 and mostly cloudy. Okay, I don't know if you were able to hear her or not, but uh, I could hear her loud and clear. Yoey, we can hear. We could hear when you did that. Okay, good. All right, but I got to keep taking my headset set off and turning the volume up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of videos that there are links to uh, on the website. So I'm going to click them from the website. Uh, no, actually, I think I've got them in here. So just uh, bear with me a moment. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And we're going to come down to video one. And play it. Hey, Cortana. Guess what? There are 2,335,981,225,000 possible answers to that question. Okay, I've got a, a <coughs> pardon me. I've got a, a second screen here that I can see, and you're not seeing what I'm seeing, so I have to figure out why. Um, do, 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 you should see this. I go here. And here, Adobe Connect is not working for me here. Um, that's interesting. Are you seeing a, a video on your end? Yuri, I'm seeing a blue picture of a girl, and it's not hey, moving. Cortana. And then, and then on the tell me a joke. What did what the passive aggressive, aggressive raven, raven say? Okay, I, it's working on yours, it's not working on mine. So I'll go ahead and keep playing it. I'll start it from the beginning. Hey, Cortana. Guess what? There are 2,335,981,212,665 possible answers to that question. Jesus. Hey, Cortana. Tell me a joke. What did the passive aggressive raven say? Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> hey, Cortana. Where are you from? The past. At least in the future, that's where I was from. Hey, Cortana, what is your favorite music? Woke up this morning, wanted to hear some blues. <laughs> hey, Cortana, where is the Master Chief? That's classified. Oh, all right. Hey, Cortana, you are beautiful. Beauty is in the photoreceptors of the beholder. That's, yeah, that's, that's it. 
Hey, Cortana. Am I ugly? No, I can't even believe you'd ask that. <laughs> uh, hey, Cortana. Hey, Cortana. What is love? I'll start working on an answer. Just give me a few hundred years. <laughs> oh, Lord. Hey, Cortana. What is the best search engine? Is that a trick question? <laughs> That's funny. We all know it's Google. Ah, uh, yeah. Hey, Cortana. Uh, good night. See you in the morning. Okay, so that is Cortana. Uh, the other recording is um, has got some other questions that were asked. And since I can't demonstrate it easily, I thought I'd uh, uh, do it here. You'll notice and where my arrow is, and you may not be able to see it on your screen, uh, there's a little yellow there. And what he's doing, instead of saying, uh, hey, Cortana, uh, what he's doing is he's clicking on the microphone down here in the corner, which is the same thing. Cortana, what is the weather like today? The forecast for tomorrow shows mostly cloudy skies with a high of 14 and a low of 8. Sing me a song. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. Sing me another song. Oh, give me a home. Where the buffalo roam, where the deer and the antelope play. Where seldom is heard a discouraging word, and the skies on a cloudy all day. Tell me a joke. What has one horn and gives milk? A milk truck. Tell me another joke. Do you know the name Pavlov? It might ring a bell. Set a reminder. I'll create a reminder. What's on your mind? I have to go shopping. When would you like to be reminded? Today. OK, at what time? 25 past 11. Sorry, I can't create reminders in the past. At what time? 23.25 p.m. All right, I'll remind you to I have to go shopping. At 11.25 p.m. today. Is that right? Yes. Great. I'll remind you. You can see it in the notebook anytime. Tell me a story. Once there was a beginning, soon after there was a middle, the end. News. Here are today's top headlines. Senate lets MSA spy program lapse, at least for now. Prisoners may be given vote because of human rights climb down, Tory advisor warns. Greece creditors hold emergency meeting over bailout crisis, live updates. Tell me something interesting. India has over 2,000 species of fireflies and each has a unique flashing pattern. Tell me something interesting. Jane Austen only rose to fame as the celebrated author we know today when her nephew released her writings, years after her death. Who is Einstein? <laughs> oh, well that turned out a bit wrong. Tell me a story. 
Romcom? Girl meets two suitors. One is a bad choice, the other a wise choice. Girl nearly chooses the bad choice, but goes for Mr. Wright instead. The end. When is E3? Okay, uh, let's share my screen one more time. Yuri, when you asked the questions and uh, she didn't have a direct answer, she took you over to a website or yeah. a uh, somewhere yeah. you might find it, right? That's correct. She opens up the browser uh, with, the, with the search engine. Okay. Thank you. Uh, as an example, um, hey Cortana, where is the Maitland, Florida Library? There's an example of, of, of how that would be used uh, with something you, you're familiar with. Um, you'll, you'll also have noticed, you hang on, I want, yeah. yeah. Okay. You ask a question like, how tall is the Eiffel Tower? Okay. Uh, you won't be able to hear it, but you will be able to see the answer. Or if she goes to the web, you'll see that. Okay. Hey, Cortana. How tall is the Eiffel Tower? There you go. Or, hey, Cortana. How many euros is twenty-five dollars? So if you have a direct answer like that, she'll bring you back the direct answer and tell you, right? That's correct. And notice how quick it was where she is figuring it out or going out to the web or the search engine or whatever she's got as a, as a database and it's right there. Thank you. Anybody else have a question or two that I might try with it? Ted, certainly you've got one. I don't hear it. <laughs> Uh, Ted said, press the Windows key. Okay, I'll do that. And I just did. Very good. It bring, brings up your start menu. Okay. Hey, Cortana. Open, all, open, open office. You got confused because I said it wrong. Let's try something else here. Hey, Cortana. Open. Open office. Open office and press. Open Office Impress. It may have done it in that other window. Let's go see. Whoops, wrong thing. Cancel. No, because I have the other ones open. It may not have done it. Um, hey, Cortana. Open Notepad. Okay, that worked. I see there's a question in the chat box. Let me look. When you asked how tall the Eiffel Tower is, you didn't um, ask in what measurement, like inches, feet, meters. 
uh, which I'm sure you can, and it will come up with that answer. Um, you can also ask it to change. Um, let's see. Hey, Cortana. How many liters in 25 gallons? So you can do conversions that way as well. If she doesn't know or if it's something that may involve some uh, math, sometimes it does bring up a calculator. Other times it brings up the search engine uh, page of the browser. Um, that's about what I was going to cover. I'm just trying to see if there's anything else here. Oh, one other thing that they've added in. Uh, I have one question before you get out of Cortana. Sure. One of the gentlemen asked if you have to say, hey, Cortana, or can you just say, hi, Cortana, or is there, some, is there a certain sequence you've got to ask? Yeah, you do have to ask, uh, hey, Cortana, you didn't hear me, or down here in the bottom, there's a little microphone. If I click that, it's ready for me to ask. Uh, Bob wants to know what the winning lottery ticket is. Hey, Cortana, what's the win winning Florida lottery number? And what does it, it she's not going to have that number, but she will have the words to go. She gave us the she gave us the winning numbers for the Florida lottery. Yep. Yes, because that's what I asked. Yeah. yeah. Well, she she brought us to the the lottery page, uh, right? Yeah. Hey, Cortana, tell us a joke. <laughs> Hey Cortana, tell me a joke. Because you didn't hear it, I'll read it. I wonder, wondered why the baseball was getting bigger. Then it hit me. Okay, a couple of questions in the chat box. Uh, Roger says, I can see how useful Cortana is. However, I can see where it can dumb us down. Kind of like asking a math problem. Uh, we could not know how to actually figure it out with paper and pencil, right? Absolutely. And then asking for lottery numbers, you forgot the date or next drawing. Uh, yeah, but, you know, it's something that well, we can play around with forever. Uh, that kind of works like Google on the Androids. Yeah, and Siri on the... Uh, the Apple, yeah, uh, both places. Uh, the uh, Amazon Echo, I, uh, they don't have as good answers. Yes, Dan. Huey? Yes, okay. <clears throat> I have Cortana on my uh, Windows phone, and when I click on the microphone, I don't have to say, hey, Cortana. I don't think you do either. As That's long correct. as. That's correct. Okay, I thought you said you have to start it with "Hey Cortana." That was somebody's no, question. No, I so that. Okay. No, you, you can do one or the other. In fact, uh, the so, last month the, the, the "Hey Cortana" wasn't working, and I had to press on the microphone. But it's nice if you got a headset or a microphone nearby. All you have to do is say "Hey Cortana." Hey Cortana. hey Cortana. What's the weather? What's the weather? It's kind of cool here. Uh, Mike says uh, kind of like an updated eight ball we used to play with many years ago. <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, those of us, uh, uh, a lot of us will remember those days. Uh, the other thing that I did want to mention and I didn't have it in my notes, but uh, while we're talking about things that they've added under all apps, and if we come down here to 
I thought it was under Microsoft, but yeah. They now have a Microsoft Solitaire collection that comes with the operating system. And uh, you have several games built into the system. And then there's going to be some other things. And they're going to have some ways in which you can spend some money while you're in the game as well. But if you're into Spider, Solitaire, or Free Cell, uh, those are back in the operating system. They did take it out in Windows 8. So if you do Spider, it tells you how to play it. And it will just close. And so you can just... It's quite fast. It works well. Uh, let's see if there's anything else here I can move around. Here's six. Whoops. And I'm not going to spend your time wasting. But the fact is, the games are back. And a lot of people were quite happy about that as well. Okay. I've uh, been going about an hour. And uh, let's see. Let me stop sharing my screen. Just uh, uh, a couple of reminders. Uh, uh, don't forget to go to the Windows Special Interest Group webpage, which is at qe.net. All of these old dates contain notes from those Sunday meetings. So you can go back and brush up on your Windows 7, 8, and, and even earlier. Uh, lots of good information there. So if you, uh, I am redoing the website, so it's going to change the look and feel. This website has not been changed since 2000 or 2005, I think, something like that, and it's outdated, and I need to update it. And I'm going to, I'm trying to do it in WordPress and trying to get it done in the next month or two. So there might be some different links. And then there was one other thing that I wanted to show you. And Yui. I thought. Yui. Yes. Yes. You mentioned WordPress a couple of times and you were looking for it with Cortana. Is that something new or has that been on there? WordPress, WordPress. is another way. Is it is another way of creating websites similar to Drupal. It is a blog-based uh, uh, way of setting up websites. And many, this website that we're looking at right now was done with WordPress. Thank you. This is the APCUG website, and what I want to show you is this little video, and it's only about two. It's only about a minute and twenty seconds I'm, long. I'm not. Uh, it says share my screen. I'm not seeing the screen right now. Okay. Yes, thank you. All right. Uh, so let me go back and share my screen. And then let's see which screen I got that on. Are you seeing it now? Now I'm seeing yeah, I'm seeing the APC UG screen, right. Okay. This website is done with WordPress. And there's a video on here. And here, there's a couple reasons I want to show it to you. Number one is the information that's in it. It's only a minute and 20 seconds. I created it using a new program that I got. And off the top of my head, it's, it's video uh, something FX. And I can't remember the full name of it. Uh, it was about 50 bucks. Uh, it's a neat program, and let me show you what I did with it. I hope you can hear it as well. I'm not sure if you'll be able to.
I can't hear anything at all, Yui. Really. Okay, it's just some music playing in the background. Okay. Anyway, you, you can see it, it's quite visual. It's short to the point. And uh, what I'm going to try to do is bring the music up just so you can hear it because it comes with music in the program as well. I'm not going to play the whole thing. I'm not going to play the whole thing over again, but I think you could hear the music that time. Uh, let me stop sharing here. Were you able to hear any of the music? No. Oh, okay. No, I couldn't hear any of it either. Okay. Well, so anyway, fine. if you go to that website, you can hear it. Uh, it it's a neat program. It, it does some really nice animation. Uh, very easy to put together a, a, a session like that. I put that together in a half a day, and what took the longest was to gather the information and to do a couple of screenshots of the, of the logos and so, and so on. That took me the longest. Uh, actually, putting together that was fairly easy using the program. And I had some problem installing it because of some uniqueness of the way my computer is set up. And I was on their uh, tech support for about an hour and a half, two hours, good two hours, uh, at 10 o'clock at night. So, uh, uh, and we got it to work. And the guy got into my system and actually changed some permissions so it would work. So it was, uh, I was quite impressed with their tech support as well. So that's just an add-on to this meeting. And uh, I'm going to stop the recording.